This week on the Inkdwell, we're taking a look at the 2019 limited edition Philadelphia Pen Show, Franklin Christoph Inc. So I wasn't able to actually make it to the Philadelphia Pen Show. Something about living in Oklahoma and Philadelphia just being too far out for this time of year. But one of my friends on Slack was able to send me this sample vial, which it didn't come with the ink on the outside. That was a mistake on my part, but hey, it happens. So I'm going to be the first to admit that the amount of red in my ink collection is rather small. I've only got three. So here we've got the Franklin Christoph 2019 fountain pen ink, and we're going to be comparing that to Rohr and Klingner, um, Mora Noah, I believe it's called, and Colorverse Mars Curiosity, because those are the only other two red inks that I actually own. So looking at the ink samples on the um, color rings made by Well-Appointed Desk, you can see that as far as color goes, Kristoff and Curiosity kind of share some of the more, I would say, almost like blunt aspect of red, where it's kind of just a muted dark. But on the lighter sides of the 2019 Franklin Kristoff, you do get some of the highlights that you do see in the RNK Moranoa. So it's actually a really good medium between those two. If you want a good flat red, then Mars Curiosity is actually a pretty good flat red. And if you want one that kind of stands out to you like ketchup, then RNK Moranoa is kind of ketchup red. Moving past the food reference though, um, we're going to be using my Sailor Riallo with a 21K hard fine nib. I just got this pen, so I'm still kind of trying to feel it in. But from what I've seen so far, this nib has quite a bit of give to it and puts a very fair amount of ink out onto the paper. So let's go ahead and get into the writing sample. Now, going into this writing sample, I've actually already done about 20 or 30 pages of writing with this pen and ink combination before doing the filming. So I had a pretty good idea of how this pen was going to react and how this ink was going to react, at least on Rhodia. I did experience a few issues as far as Leuch term goes. That paper, for some reason, the ink was having a really hard time finding purchase on that paper. And I know it wasn't the nib because I would write on the Leuch term. It would start having some trouble and I would immediately switch over to Rhodia. No trouble at all. Switch to Tomoe. No trouble at all go right back to Leuch term, and the second I put the nib on paper, having issues, no flow. As you can see here though, no flow issues at all. It's actually a really nice medium dark red when you're writing with it. As far as red inks go, that's actually a characteristic I like with those, well, with red. Orange, I like it to be a little brighter, Yellow, definitely a lot darker, but for red, a good medium to medium dark, I'm all for it. So even though I'm writing with a hard fine nib from Sailor, this one has enough give that you actually do get to see some, not too much, but some shading from the cross hatches to the downstrokes on the X's, the figure eights, and the checkerboard, which is actually really cool. But let's go ahead and take a look at dry time for the sink. So there's our one second sample. And then we're gonna go ahead and move into the five second count. Still pretty wet. Now let's go ahead and do our 10 second count. I'm still expecting a little bit here, but 
I wasn't expecting as much as I got there, and I thought for the most part I was keeping the lines fairly even, so I don't know if that was pilot error or what the case might be. Now, here we go with the 15-second test. And after seeing what I saw in the 10-second test, I was actually expecting a lot worse than that. But seeing that, it's good to say that this ink is going to be a medium drying ink. So 15 seconds on Rhodia. A little bit quicker on some of the copy paper I use at work. But you can see there with how wet this ink is that while it's good ink for like letter writing or just normal stationery, probably not the best workplace ink. One last thing I want to do to this ink, though, to kind of give it a look is how it looks coming from the nib versus how it looks coming from a typical cotton swab and how it looks coming from a syringe. So putting the swab away and grabbing the syringe, which I think I need to switch out syringes. This one's getting a little harder to fill as time goes on. I think the O-ring is starting to get stuck. Like right there, I was having to apply a lot more pressure than I probably should have just to get one drop of ink out of syringe. Like I'm putting a lot of pressure on that plunger. It should have gone everywhere. And that's all I got out of it. So we'll go ahead and put four splotches on there. And let's go ahead and take a look at how they look straight out of the vial. Well, and out of the nib. Well, once I get the vial capped. All right, so let's go ahead and get that closer to camera. So some pretty good color in the drops, but you expect that when the ink is still taking a long time to dry. Out of the nib, the parts where I hit the paper three or four times, pretty dark. The swab, you can tell that it's going to start to lighten up there. So some of the spots are going to have some dark properties to them, but for the most part, they're all going to be kind of a medium red. Now, let's go ahead and compare this to a little bit of video I took about three minutes later after everything had dried. By the way, before we do that, though, look at how viscous this ink is. At this point, I've got the paper angled to about 65, 70 degrees, and that ink is still holding to itself. That's pretty trippy. I wouldn't think an ink that's that viscous would actually flow as well as it does, but it does, which is just mind blown. So back to the other video about how that stuff dried after a little bit of time. So even though I'm recording the audio after the video, I knew going into the drips that I pretty much called it. You're not getting much color variation um, from the drips to the swabs to the straight from the nib. Honestly, on the nib and swab, what you see is what you get. The drips kind of give you an idea of what kind of shading you're going to get if you do have a wetter nib that puts out just insane amounts of ink on the paper. And that's to be expected. Now, the last thing we're going to look at here with this ink is kind of a torture test. So I have a bottle here filled with bleach water. Let's see how it does. So one spray. Pretty good amount of bleach water on there. And we're going to let it sit for a few seconds before I try to rub my finger through the paper. I mean, just seeing what I'm seeing there, this ink is holding up really well. Like, I've had a couple dye mining inks just completely disappear when I've done that. But everything I've got there on the paper is still 
pretty legible. I mean, there's some smearing, but that ink just held up to bleach. So I'd call that a win. I mean, it still cleans off of surfaces pretty easy. I spilt some on my desk a little bit earlier in the day and it cleaned up pretty good. But put it on paper, put some bleach on it, and that beautiful red ink just isn't going anywhere. So there you have my quick look at the 2019 Philadelphia Pen Show Franklin Kristoff Limited Edition ink. Honestly, normally I'm not a big fan of red. Let's just go ahead and put that out there. I like blue, I like green. Red's just not my cup of tea. But this particular red ink, I've been putting it to quite a bit of use over the last week and a half, and I may actually have to pick up a bottle, like a complete bottle, before they run out of stock, which for right now, you can go over to franklinchristoff.com and pick up a one ounce bottle for about eight, nine dollars. So honestly, I recommend it. Go to franklinchristoff.com and pick it up now while you still can. It's going to be one of those inks that if you do get a sample and try it, but you don't get a bottle, you're probably going to feel like you've missed out. And for an ink that has a good color to it and behaves very well with very little, if any at all, in the way of feathering and provides an okay amount of shading, then this is going to be a red ink for you. This coming from a guy that really doesn't do red ink, so you may want to take that with a grain of salt or let the bleach test speak for you a little bit. I mean, that's entirely up to you and your mileage may vary. So thank you for watching. That's the end of this review. And if you liked it, hit that like button. If you didn't like it, you know what to do. Either way, hit subscribe, keep an eye out for more videos, follow the channel on Twitter and Instagram at The Ink Dwell, and support the channel at patreon.com slash The Ink Thank you guys for watching. I'll see you next week.